Okay, this is the video on the continuous uniform distribution and integrals. And what I'm going to do is give a um, parallel description of what's going on in the text. Continuous um, uniform distribution and integrals. Where I, I, I first discussed in the text the continuous uniform distribution just based on the idea that all of the numbers in a certain interval are equally likely and that no numbers outside of the integral are possible. Interval are possible, excuse me. And then I went into some integral notation for how I could represent the um, distribution of a continuous uniform random variable with a function. And I'm going to go through that here again in the video because I think that's a really good way to get a handle on what's going on with the PDF. Okay, so we're going to suppose that. By the way, I'm in Maple here. Again, I don't have my pen pad, so I'm going to do the best with what I have, and I apologize for the black background. Okay, so let's suppose that I have a random variable x, and x has a uniform distribution. It'll be a continuous uniform distribution on the interval from 5 to 9. So what that means is um, x has possible values between 5 and 9. All of those values are equally likely, and no values outside of that interval are possible. Okay, so suppose we wanted to know the probability that, let's see, I'll need to put this in a math note, the probability that um, 6 was less than or equal to x and less than or equal to 8. So the probability that x is between 8 and 6. Well, let's see, all the possible values are between 5 and 9. That's an interval of length 4. Here I have an interval of length 2. I want to know the probability that my random variable is between 6 and 8, and there's distance 2 between 6 and 8. So this is half of that interval, um, so the probability is just going to be 0.5. Okay. Now I can express this as an integral. And to express it as an integral, I need what's called a probability density function. So I've already typed out my probability density function. Let me bring it up here. It takes a while to type it out, so I thought I wouldn't bore you with that. And here's my probability density function for um, the, un the discrete uniform, or excuse me, the continuous uniform random variable that we're talking about here. It's one-fourth if x is between 5 and 9, and 0 otherwise. Now, why does that make sense as some kind of function that displays the random variable's distribution? And to do that, I've graphed this function to explain why that's the case. So let's see if we can pull this graph up here. I know it's down there. Let's see. And unfortunately, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to have to scroll down. Unfortunately, I've got all this messy stuff here. Um, don't worry about that. That's syntax that I put into Maple, Maple to make it give me these graphs. And here's the graph of the probability density function. So notice that it's a piecewise defined function, and we saw that in its definition. It's one-fourth if the input's between 5 and 9, and it's zero otherwise. Okay, so for inputs over here, I have a y value is 0. For inputs to the right of 9, I have a y value of 0. And between 5 and 9, I have a value of 1 fourth, 0.25. Okay. And the reason this makes sense is, well, between 5 and 9, it's the same height for all those numbers. And the same height, the same value for the PDF, corresponds to having the same probability, the same likelihood. And then if I end, why did I choose 0.25 for that same height? Well, I chose 0.25 because to find the probability that x is between 5 and 9, I would integrate. Okay, I would integrate the function from 5 to 9, and that's finding the area between the graph and the x-axis from 5 to 9. Well, that's just the area of this um, of this rectangle, which has a width of 4 and a height of 1 fourth. So I set that height to be 1 fourth, or 0.25, because I wanted this area to be 1. Okay. Okay, so this is my PDF. So when I say that I want, or when I want the probability that, 
let's see if I can get about to the right starting point here. The probability that 6 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 8. What I'm doing there is I'm calculating an integral. Let me find that integral. Yep. I'm doing the integral from 6 to 8 of my piecewise defined function, my f um, sub x. Let's do a subscript. There we go. f sub x of x dx. Okay. And if I press enter, Maple will calculate that integral for me. And sure enough, it's one half, just like what we thought of. Just like what we thought of. And again, no, you will not be asked to use Maple. This is just the best tool I have um, for explaining these ideas to you without the pen pad. Okay, so let's go to another example. Let's suppose we want the probability. Oh, actually, I want to show you that integral. So we integrated this function, our probability density function, from 6 to 8. And if I just change these values from 6 to 8, press enter, and then press enter on this, there's the area that we found. We had a width of 2 and a height of 1 fourth, so that's why we got 1 half for that integral. Okay, now I'm going to do another probability, and that's the probability that my random variable x is between, let's see, I want to change this to math modes, the probability the random variable x is between 8 and 10. Okay, so that's going to be, in calculus language, it is the integral from 8 to 10 of f sub x of x dx. And let me see, I don't think that f should be green. Yeah, maybe it should. We'll leave it be green, see if it's happy with that. And it says that this integral it is happy with that is one fourth. Okay, one fourth. Now, why was it one fourth this time? Because we still have an interval of length two. And the reason it was one fourth is, well, I can see it by drawing a picture of what that integral is doing down here. Notice that I'm integrating from eight to ten, but the function zero from nine to ten. So I'm really just integrating from eight to nine and then I add up a bunch of zeros from 9 to 10. So this was 1 times 1 fourth when I computed that area for the integral. Okay, so again, even though I integrated up to 10, the PDF, my function f notice, is 0 if x is not between 5 and 9. So out here to the right of 9, my function is 0, the integral doesn't add anything there. Okay, so that's 1 fourth. And for any, um, for any probability density function like this, what makes it a probability density function is, first of all, this is, that it's non-negative. It doesn't make sense to have negative numbers for the same reason it doesn't make sense to have probabilities, um, negative probabilities. And then second of all, I need it to integrate when I go from negative infinity to infinity. If I integrate that function, I should get 1. Okay, and sure enough, I do. Sure enough, I do. And we can see that integral by, let's see, plotting from, from again, 5 to 9. Since that's the only place, it can't plot an integral going out to negative infinity to infinity. So I'm just going to tell it to plot from 5 to 9. That's what that integral looks like from negative infinity to infinity of this function. Because to the left of 5, to the right of 9, the function is 0. So the integral doesn't add anything. Okay. So for a PDF, we're going to need that the values are non-negative. They can be 0, but they can't be negative. And then that the total integral over all real numbers is 1.